Welcome to Restructure Podcast, where we want to help you be everyone's favorite realtor. Today, we're talking about your sphere of influence. Everyone has one, maybe. Do you? Bueller. Bueller. You like that, that audio, Mark? Sounded like a gong show. Yeah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, fortuitous. Fortuitous. <laughs> yes. Foreshadowing. Uh, do not get out the shepherd's hook yet. <laughs> I've never used that word in my life. <laughs> shepherd's hook uh, or fortuitous. Well, Either I mean, one. don't you remember? I mean, we're old enough to remember the gong show. Yeah. Yeah, and they had the little. Shepherd took somebody come out there and get off the stage. Yeah, that was the very bare minimum of television worthy filthy entertainment. <laughs> yeah. Well, speaking <laughs> of entertainment, um, we have a lot I, in common with that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, we're not very entertaining, but uh, I was talking about Bueller, Bueller in the intro, and I love that movie. I love Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Um, have you ever seen it? Um, is that a serious <laughs> question, Cameron? <laughs> yes. Sausage King of Chicago. <laughs> um, <laughs> Ferris Bueller had an incredible sphere of influence in that movie. Is that what we're talking about? Sphere? We're talking about spheres. That's a good one. That's probably not basketballs. We're not talking about the globe. We're talking about your sphere of influence. I mean, is there anything more important in your what? production in no. real estate? Not no. I there, can't think of one. No. The, what's funny is I can remember going through some of the early trainings when I first got in and seeing SOI everywhere and not knowing what it was. Did you make some colorful acronyms out of that? <laughs> I mean, it's just, I'm sitting there, you know, you're in a training in a room full of other realtors who's, you know, they're supposed to be way ahead of me and but i'm not going to raise my hand um hi so yeah we've got um we've been five pages into this and it's been four and a half hours i don't know what soi is supremely <laughs> offensive income <laughs> that's what i want to make that's not not what it meant no okay i mean yeah that's what it could have meant that to me i don't remember what i i probably did sit there and doodle in while i was while it was all washing over me Okay, so everyone needs to be out there building your SOI. Um, okay, I, I don't do we have Legos? I mean, <laughs> Lego logs, maybe? Lego. Lo yes, is this a kit? Um, or I is this? I don't know what this is, but everyone's talking about it and how hard it is to have and how you need to build it and all these rings of SOI. And so eventually, I mean, I've, I figured it out. But if you're out there as a new realtor listening to the show, SOI stands for Sphere of Influence. Learn it, commit to them, serve them. It's your business. Yeah. Don't blow it. So a bad SOI. <laughs> Soy. <laughs> Soy sauce. So Ferris had, Ferris Bueller, yep. had an incredible sphere of influence, like you said. Uh, yeah. I would argue almost the entire city of Chicago, <laughs> except for his sister and the principal. <laughs> right? <laughs> Everyone is on his side, wants to see him win. And his sister eventually joined the sphere. Yes, she did. Reluctantly, but she did. <laughs> After an interlude with uh, Charlie Sheen, I think, at the police it station. Was. Yes. Oh my gosh, Charlie anyway. Sheen. Yeah. <laughs> he also he is a sphere of influence. There's a lot of things he is. <laughs> um, so you know. <laughs> how do, so how do we build a sphere of influence? If build is the right word, I would okay. argue maybe, maybe not. Um, and. Could it be through service, Aaron? Um, but how do you build a sphere of influence? Uh, well, I mean, I think that's one of the most fascinating parts of individuals' real estate businesses. So you already have one. I, even if you just showed up in a new town uh, from nowhere all by yourself, you're going to interact with people. And so that may not feel like a sphere of influence, but if you know no one, I mean, kind of a la born identity, right? I mean, you know, he... Yeah. 
he didn't know anybody. So how could I forget you? You're the only person I know. <laughs> yeah. So sphere you, of influence, check. Yes. So sphere of influence, I would say, really is relationship building. Maybe, okay, so I'm going to throw another word instead of build. Do it. Since we assume that you have one uh, okay. in life, if you're not transitory all the time. Leverage. How do you leverage your sphere of influence? Maybe a better question. Okay. Um, now, you and I go about this in similar ways. You're, I mean, Bart, your career is long, much longer than mine at this point. But at the end of the day, in order for me to believe that I could ask someone for a referral or for business directly from them, I better be serving them yes. somehow. I want to, I want to be in your sphere of influence first. How can I help you in whatever it is you're doing, uh, hosting an event? I mean, if you're new to an area as a realtor and you're trying to, you know, grow a sphere of influence, go volunteer. Yeah. I mean, numero uno, day one, just go find a place to volunteer and you will start to meet people who are thrilled that you have time to help them. Yeah. I mean, has nothing to do with real estate. That's for sure. No. Just, you, you know, build relationships. Yeah. That's how you ultimately will leverage. And I'm not in love with that word either, by the way. No, I mean, you know, grow, build. Develop. A, develop. That's an awesome word. Develop your sphere. Developers, developers, developers. Yeah. And so I'm going to ask, I'm going to throw a couple of comments out. Like, you know, what is, you don't have to answer these like right now, but okay. quality, what is a quality sphere person in your real estate business look like? Um, okay. How, how can you develop them into being a more, uh, impactful sphere of influence in your real estate career um, what are the proper expectations of a sphere uh, a okay. person of influence in your life how many do you need you know how many is is four enough or do you need a hundred to I mean this is kind of like when you build out your goals every year mm -hmm. <laughs> how many calls equal yeah this much money um, I mean, what's, what are maybe some characteristics of the personalities even of these people that are uh, in your sphere? Like who is the most attractive to you to be the most rewarding um, in, in, in your business? Um, so anyway, those are kind of some of the okay. things we're going to cover. I'd like to. Well, I mean, so why don't you, why don't you start? I so, mean, you, you know, you, quality. Quality. Let's talk about that. Like what is a quality? So, I mean, I know lots of people. I have a lot of people in my life. But there are certain people I do not want to ask for business or I don't want to – I mean, I, I will serve them. But I'm not expecting anything to come of it for my real estate and really probably wouldn't even want it. So I, we, don't okay. have, we don't have to go down that track, but I don't want well, to I – mean, I mean, can you give an example of how – of a type of person in your life? Like are you talking about you don't want to ask your family – you want to leave your family out of your sphere of influence for business or no, I'm happy to I mean I don't focus okay. on them but I'm happy to I mean obviously I serve my family in any way I can and help and uh, have relationships that are thank goodness that I mean we're all local and so that's a, a positive thing but it's not something I rely on it's not something I have a daily like a scheduling thing I do with my family that I rely on for business so I mean that may be different from pe person to person okay. but you know, I would argue that, um, you know, there are certain people of influence in my life that I have close relationships with through life, just doing life together. Okay. Um, that we talk and and part of our conversations are how we're doing in business and how, how are we supporting our families, you know, those kind of conversations and how can they help me? Like they have a vested interest in seeing me succeed in whatever that is. Doesn't have to be work. Okay. Work, work is one of the things they want to see me succeed in, and that is a quality sphere of influence person for me. Um, and it, again, it could be from from um, like, what do you enjoy? I mean, what do you do for fun? Where do you spend time? Like you said, rotary or um, working out at a gym or rock climbing or I mean, recreational stuff. It could be anything. It could be anything. The library. I mean, do you read a lot? whatever it is? Whatever you do. I would see where those people are that you have fun and enjoy being and really see if there's somebody that fits the bill that may be a good sphere of influence person to, you know, broaden that relationship. Yeah. So you and I both thrive on kind of physical 
seeing someone in person over a cup of coffee, but your sphere of influence, and this is changing here recently, your sphere of influence may be completely digital. Oh, yeah, 100%. That's a I, whole other... I mean, that's a whole other world, and I don't want to, you know, frighten off any any folks out there. Real estate is changing, and so you don't have to be a in-front-of-people person. I mean, it, it, I think it helps, of, of course, um, to be able to do that, but I know lots of agents that run businesses from a desk, and they serve their clients. Yeah. And, I mean, you have to be pretty intentional about how you maintain those that, relationships mm-hmm. on a digital. I mean, you would have to, I would think you have to actually make some effort to make some visits potentially back and forth on uh, wherever they are, maybe. Yeah, but if but you can build <clears throat> the bulk of the relationship for some folks is 100%. online through texting. 100%. That's, you know, still feels strange to me to, to rely completely on. I haven't on. seen the best man in my wedding in five plus years okay and vice versa he was the best man at my wedding and i've done three deals with him and we talk on the phone and take care of business and how's the family and good to see you, you know, there you go not really but good to talk to you <laughs> yeah. so exactly what you said it's all on the phone email text um i mean it's not like you don't have facebook you can see what people are doing i mean there's ways to find out what people are doing day to day. How was the trip? How did you know I was on there? Well, you, your wife posted 187 <laughs> pictures of you crashing a surfboard. <laughs> yes. It you was, learned to surf, and I watched it all. <laughs> it was incredible. It uh, really wasn't, but... Yeah, I mean, realtors are... I have a lot of realtor friends that I would consider in a sphere of influence for Ooh, yeah. me that I am not going to ask for business. Yep. But they're important to my business just in sharing ideas and uh but it's not just marketing but you know I mean, how should i handle this negotiation or this came up and who do yeah. you know that we can talk to you about this or affiliates of affiliate all kinds, flooring yeah. i mean just you know any any type of thing like that doesn't have to be directly correlated to a transaction per se but uh you know they may or may not refer you an actual deal but they may glean some some information that will benefit your business. Absolutely. So those are definitely going to. So, I mean, you develop those people. At the end of the day, you have to get to a place where you're okay, like you said, asking for how they can help you. And you have to be able to convey that in a very clear way. How can I, what is a good lead for you? What is a good way I can help you? You have to be able to answer that question when it's asked. Otherwise, you're never going to monetize this. That is your call to action. So your sphere of influence, they need to know how they can help you. And that's how, I mean, you asked me earlier, kind of how do I define a quality sphere of influence person? It's someone that wants me to succeed, mm-hmm. that knows what I'm doing. And, uh, you know, this is for all things, right? I mean, in church, it's not about business. Maybe it's um, something, that, um, an idea that I want to convey. And so there are people that want to hear my thoughts and opinions and want to see that message conveyed so they're in that sphere of influence but for my business if someone wants and i you've all got these people and some of them unfortunately may not be physically close to you Uh, they may be in another state but until you build a local sphere of influence in my opinion anyone that wants to see you succeed and that would give you an encouraging word or kick in the bottom if you needed it to kind of get going again those are people that are in the tightest part of your sphere of influence that you should be calling on a regular basis reminding them how you're doing and they will ask hey is there anything i can do for your business and if it's a local person you say yes i need your antenna up for people that are looking to buy or sell especially new construction homes people are going into those places unrepresented and um, i'd like to you know, be there to, to serve them. You know, I'll do, you know, I will serve them, right? These are people who trust your service and will refer you. Yeah, you've got equity in that relationship. More like, I mean, I built my business solely on this. Like, I did zero marketing at all for a long time, years and years and years. And um, I felt it was almost impervious to market conditions, um, which is probably not true but it sure felt like it and so i could always count on them to take care of me um and that was because i built relationships first and when something 
came across their life, whether their own or a friend's or a family member, I would be the person they would call for advice. And that's when the conversation occurs. What would you do if you were me? And then I tell them and I say, I can help you with that. Would it be okay if I offered a solution myself and handled it for you? It's that easy. And as opposed to the other route of, mm-hmm. hey, are you know anybody buying a sell house today? Well, you know, I know we just met, but you know, see the tag? <laughs> I'm a realtor. Yeah. And I'm awesome. You just have to trust me on that. Yeah. Time. And when you get started, there's, you know, you need to meet people that do not have a realtor. And so that can be part of your sphere it, building. It is not something that you and I are necessarily comfortable dropping in on uh, new people at all. Uh, well, and you can't rely, but, you can't rely on that on supporting your business. No. It's a horrible trans, uh, you know, uh, success rate. It's a horrible success rate. It is. And unfortunately, in the beginning, you have to take the good with the bad and you have to work things with horrible success rates to build the relationships. But your goal should always be if I meet 10 new people today, whatever it is, are any of those people your people? And that's what you're looking for. Those you're just looking an army. To, just are looking for an army of people that want to support your business. That you are looking for the people that you are going to be their favorite realtor. We're making yeah, favorite realtor. Like that's when they it. think of it, they think of you over their sister or cousin mm-hmm. who got their license to do it part time or flip a house because they were watching the TV. Absolutely. They're and, watching a show on properties and you are in their mind. Yeah. And so it's important for all of us to be top of mind and, you know, send cards, do Facebook posts, do all of that work that's required to uh, to stay in their sphere of influence. Yeah. I mean, you got to nurture it. You got to take care of it. It's valuable. It's supporting your family if you have one. Um, so let me ask you this. So we talked about you know the quality of and how to develop these people around in your life mm-hmm. to help support your your livelihood um we kind of talked about the expectations of them a, a little bit as far as you know we're looking for them to share people that need your service that you can serve and you obviously created a trust that you will do a good job for them um how many do you need you think one right if it's the right one I mean, yeah, I, so, <laughs> I mean, I, I do. There, there is a realtor who has a who has a client in Japan and has a he bought one of the my listings and I got a letter that had ninety something million dollars in it at Bank of America and that's his guy. Oh so my. he needs one. One is I'd love that one. We would all love that one. They buy about eleven properties a month. Oh my gosh! Yeah. And uh, so it's, in, you know, that's incredible. Do most of us rely on one, Bart? <laughs> <laughs> Only in our dreams. Only in our dreams and in that guy's reality. Yes. Uh, well, you could, you know what, brushing up against people like that is good for you. You know, it reminds you that it's possible. Mm-hmm. And then you think about somebody that may be closer to that type of person in your life and go, don't, you know, have enough courage to go say hey can i get in the rotation or you know who do you use yeah or let's just go to coffee i mean coffee is how i you know that's what my mentor had me doing just constantly and uh, he admitted he said why do i do coffee he said because it's easy to do three or four in a row and it's a lot cheaper than lunch i love it (laughs) (laughs) nuggets so you're out there buying people coffee but on that on the number of people in your sphere i seem to remember and so i mean if you've done it have you done the peak producer class i mean the buffini it's been a long time since i've looked at it but yeah yeah so somebody was talking about that that they were taking their database of i don't know let's just make up a number 500 people and turning it into trying to get it down to 20 or 30 Mm-hmm. And that everyone on average knows five people a year moving. Yeah. And so in that instance, if you're out there thinking, well, okay, do I have five, do I have 10 people that would cross a room for a hundred percent of those five moves and say, don't know who you're using or who you're thinking about using, but you need to cross their name out and use Bart Gurley. Here's his information. I'm going to text it to you right now. Yep. So in that instance, you need 10 people who know five people moving to do 50 deals a year. Heck yeah. I could 
That's a good number. Of That's bottles. a great number. And uh, if you do that, then you need 10. If you're going to be asking 50 people for one, then you need 50. And so, yeah, um, I mean, it's and goal setting and, and what's right for everybody is going to be different. You've all seen the piece of paper. If you haven't seen the piece of paper, go ask your broker or your mentor for a piece of paper that does goal setting. I promise they've got one in their inbox. Yes. They probably tried to make you do it. <laughs> and you it exists. deleted it. <laughs> yeah. It starts out with what income do you want to make, and then it turns it into the number of calls you need to do every day, and it's probably something like 175 calls a day. So those, you know, that that uh, avatar is kind of the <laughs> word we use. You okay. Know, For your avatar. sphere. Yeah. Like uh, the guy that gets 11 deals a month. I mean, uh, you know, influencers, like people that you know that are influencing a lot of people around them mm -hmm. that's who i would snuggle up next to and and say hey can i can i be in your in your world you know can we do life together can we have coffee can we whatever the you know extracurricular activity they do if it's something you enjoy i mean however you can connect with those kind of people one there's a reason that people want input from them they're yeah. they're knowledgeable they're an expert in some field whether it's personal relationships, financial business, it doesn't really matter what it is. You can probably gain a lot of knowledge from that person that has nothing to do with buying or selling a house. But I would argue eventually it will turn into getting in some kind of opportunity. And that's all you're looking for. You're looking for a chance. You're looking for a chance. I mean, this is a sphere of influence and the influence you're looking for is that they will recognize you, be top of mind, when they hear somebody looking to buy or sell a home. Yeah, and they, okay, so there's a couple other characteristics I want to talk about. So, okay. The people that you would call, you know, in your, your sphere of influence, um, what do they think of you? I mean, do they know that you're committed, that you're going to serve them just like it's your own? Uh, are they know that you're going to ask whatever needs to be asked to protect and make your clients feel like a hero? All those things. Do they know that about you? I mean, do you know them well enough that they know that about you? Because if they don't, they need to get to that level. Because that's when they'll call you and you don't even have to market to them. Yeah. Because you know them. Mm -hmm. And so for me, that has taken time to get to. And so I would say that uh, I think the quality of your sphere, I mean, maybe it's obvious. I haven't really thought about it this way, but I think the quality of a sphere of influence, not necessarily the power of the influencers, but the strength of my relationships with the people in my sphere, that has grown. And so that has modified some of what, uh, some I mean, a, a lot of the relationships, but some of what comes back from it. The yes. deeper those relationships go, the stronger the calls for advice and, uh, you know, hey, can you help? so and so with this and again it's a lot of times it's not necessarily real estate immediately maybe the first time you're helping somebody is because i own a pickup truck and they know that i will go can you help me move my mattress i bought a new box spring please i mean it <laughs> happened just a few months ago that's why i don't own a truck by the way <laughs> but now i know you <laughs> now you know me <laughs> And I will help, and people know, and people know that, right? They know that I've got you know trailers and uh, all that kind of stuff to help people move. And I'm kidding. I have all the same stuff. I have trailers. People. Oh, have I've seen your trailers. Yeah. Your, your uh, I don't want to hear about it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, okay. So, what do you enjoy with people? You know, I enjoy mm -hmm. outdoor activity, of course, like you do, fishing and absolutely being outdoors and enjoying you know the world we live in. I mean, kid, so we both have kids in school, yep. and we are parts of those worlds. And so if you've got kids in school, that is a sphere of influence for you. Those teachers know people, find out who the favorite, you know, find out who the favorite teacher is, and uh, go make them so that, I mean, go help them understand that you're their new favorite realtor. Yeah. You know, I'm going to, I want to kind of skirt a little fringe topic here about, okay. you know, let's say your sphere of influence let's say you actually have one okay maybe you're getting business from it and we talked about in a previous show about the story branding and um you know if you're if your story's dull okay maybe your work life is dull you're a little like you <laughs> walk, know, walk gosh another hundred and twenty five thousand dollar house 
mortgage. I wonder what it feels like to sell a six hundred thousand dollar house. Well, okay, it's no different. I mean, the same process occurs. Add zeros. Nothing's different. So maybe that person has a desire to maybe move into a different market, a luxury market, okay. or, or commercial, or whatever land. I mean, mm-hmm. whatever it is, whatever your your curiosity is, or about generate, and obviously that generates more income. Um, which is, I mean, being honest, I mean, sure, we're in business to make a profit. Yes, mm-hmm. not a, not apologizing for making a profit. No, um, but I'm serving the same with the same integrity. So, how can I? jump into those other influencers to maybe change the leads that are coming my way or the referrals i mean that's a ba- i mean it's kind of a broad question but you know what i'm asking yeah I, I do and and i would say that one way you can do that is to serve realtors who are serving those markets okay so you know call up folks in your office or that um that you can that maybe have a six hundred thousand dollar list let's just stick with that number six hundred thousand yeah. dollar listing do you and your clients, would you be served by me holding that property open for you this weekend? Is yeah. there something I can do to help market that property? Would you allow me to market that property online, right? I mean, it's it's there, someone else is listing and you want to market it because you want to try to catch people looking at those types of homes. That is a very specific way to do it. I That is how I have grown um, slightly my you know price point yeah. in our market here. That's a great idea. And while you may not convert immediately, um, basically you're learning through the uh, opportunity that agent has given you. Mm -hmm. You know, and you you have a relationship with that agent. They trust you to hold it open and put a good light, shine a good light on their brand. And, uh, And then you get exposure to see if there are any differences on what that transaction looks like, what those buyers are, you know, their focus is at that price point. Um, yeah, and you need to knock it out of the park on an open house, or if you're ser- you know serving uh, an agent that way, so that they know that <laughs> so that they call you because there are not there are not a lot of agents that want to do that kind of work, but yeah. some clients still want that service. Yep, and you are providing a service. I mean, when I'm talking to agents that I'm mentoring, I had a conversation this week. I said, "Hey, you want to work with other agents that are high energy." Like there, yeah. there is an agent in your market that has a house this weekend at your price point, and they are praying for your call. <laughs> right. So you don't want to if, – if you call Bart and he's like, well, you know, I guess I could call the client and see if they want me to hold it open. Like, say, so you know what? It doesn't really sound like it's a good fit this week. I want to move on. Yeah. And you call somebody and you get Aaron. Oh, my gosh. Thank you for calling I was going to have to miss my son's soccer tournament, but because I, I promised my clients I'd hold it open for them this weekend. Thank you. When can you be there? I'll have the signs there for. I mean, like you're going to find yeah. somebody that is so happy that you're serving them. That's where you start building That's those idea. relationships. That's awesome. Well, uh, anything else that you can think of that we haven't covered on this? I mean. I mean, it's an endless topic. I mean, there's it's so a, many examples. I, there, There is. I, the main thing is just don't be afraid to tell someone how they can help you. I mean, I doubt you're the type of, type of person right now listening to the show thinking, if anyone asks me to do anything for them, I am going to tell them no, and then I'm going to slash their tires. <laughs> No, that's not you. You're the type of person that if you see someone or a kid drop their pacifier in a coffee shop, you lean down and pick it up. I mean, it's like that's all you're saying. You're just putting yourself out there to serve others. And don't forget, there are people that want to serve you. And there are your sphere. Yep. There it is. Engage. Engage your sphere. People want to you to be successful like us here at restructure we want you to be everyone's favorite realtor in your market unless you're in my market no (laughs) (laughs) then we want you to be everybody's second favorite (laughs) the second is the same as last (laughs) sorry uh oh sorry that's not true (laughs) it might be true it might Uh, be hey Uh, i want to just real quick before we finish so you know, we have a lot of different levels of experienced agents listening to us, I assume. Okay. Um, a beginning agent. You know, I run into this so many times where they don't know where to start. We tell them to go do the sphere. Okay. They're scared to death. 
you know, they already have three friends that are realtors or they're, you know, whatever. They're just yep, tired of we've been there. You know, yep. fear, 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 fear. Yeah, squish that fear. Crushed. You've got to go talk to them and tell them what you do or send an email or social media. Whatever the medium is, I would argue it needs to be in person at some point. Have a one on one. But um, get out there. If you can't do that, if you can't do any way of that, like in any format, you need to stop now and stop wasting your money and time. And Agree. Do something else, please. Absolutely. Anybody could tell you the truth, or they could tell you, "Yeah, you can do it. You're great." All they're going to do is they're going to take the leads or the family members that want to buy and sell a house. They're going to run it through the, you know, if it's the broker, they're going to take part of the split, whatever. You're going to be out of business in six months to a year, just like eighty percent are. Yeah, I mean, and, and it's just going to be a tough lesson. I mean, listen to as many podcasts as you want on real estate. Mindset is going to come up. And if you are afraid to tell your friends who want you to be successful that you are now a realtor, it is going to be very hard. Yeah. If you're ashamed of it, maybe you made the wrong decision. (laughs) Yes. And what I will say there is that if that is you and you feel completely called to real estate, you need to join a team. Yeah, and you need to and, and you need to just let them tell you what to do. Now that is not something that Bart or I were ever interested in, so I don't have personal experience, you know, being a transaction coordinator for a big team and kind of learning the business that way. I know people that do it, and over time you can transition in. But uh, but yeah, I did just, that. I mean, I did it from the okay. from the mortgage side. I mean, I okay, I did I, sit there for almost two years, you know, processing and and watching how other cool. people are talking to people on the phone and listening to no written out scripts i would just listen and i wasn't making much money to do that but it gave me the tools to go out and have a a level of comfort on who my personality was and do it the way i had seen others do it that i was comfortable with gotcha which is I'm, the benefit yeah. of what you're getting at okay. go to a team go watch somebody else do it go watch five different people do it get exposed to different ways of engaging people find one that works for you Yes, that does sound more fun. I basically burned all the life vests and then intentionally crashed my ship into an iceberg and made my family and myself swim. (laughs) Swim! Commit! Yeah, climb up on the iceberg. It's cold. Stop whining. I just want to (laughs) die. And we made it. Uh, So, you know, you can't can't do this, but you've got to build your sphere. And I mainly... I think, you know, Bart and I are joking about some things, but there are people. I've said it before in this show. I'll say it again. There are people in your life that want to see you succeed. Believe that. And uh, and you can get it done. So that's Bart smashing into our uh, mics here. I think we're still rolling. Uh, yeah, I don't have any motivational quotes today other than just from Bart and I here at Restructure that uh, you can you can do this. And uh, whether it's through some training that we've got. Oh, yeah. Uh, Let's not yeah, go ahead. bypass that about the burn your face off. It's melt your Facebook ads. Is it? Melt your Facebook ads. Melt your face. That sounds so much cooler. I love it. It does. They are awesome. We've been blood, sweat, and tears putting those together for everybody. <laughs> and laughter. And la- yeah, at me. But yeah, it, but they, they're going to be great. I uh, talked to you know a couple of realtors this morning, and they are excited to see it. So if you're not building Facebook ads for your business, this is exactly for you. It takes you from, I don't have a business Facebook page to, I now have scripts and nurturing leads. Setting appointments. Setting appointments. Converting. Whole nother business model outside of Sphere. Mm -hmm. But I mean- It builds your Sphere. Diversify. Diversify. Yes. So. All right. Well, we are excited about your businesses. Where can they find that stuff? Oh. Thank I mean, you. come on, dude. R dash E structure.com. Restructure.com is R dash E structure.com. And we are building a member area with lots of free goodies, uh, some coaching, some scripts, the Melt Your Facebook ads training, and uh, these podcasts. And uh, book, you know, we'll do some you know, book lists each month and give some stuff away. Give some stuff away. Who doesn't like to give stuff away or receive stuff? We like to give it away. I think I have some Rangers tickets coming up. Maybe we can, dude, kind of raffle those off for whoever like I don't know. shares it with the most people or something. Love it. 
<laughs> I mean, they're not my tickets to give, so uh, yes, I think we should give those away. Yes. <laughs> if they'd only start winning more, dang it. And it wasn't 300 degrees on the seat where your butt turns into a hamburger patty. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, man, that was so pleasant. I, I on didn't... that note, for those of you out there running... Um, you know, sweating your brains out. That was Bart talking about his ranger seats behind home plate. It's a great view. It is a great view. All right, man. I think we're out of here. Restructure Nation. Thank you. Enjoyed it. All right. Bye. Bye.